Hello, I'm Nan Simonson, and I just shot a video for a Greek um, lima bean stew, and that's cooking. I am about to do this red lentil chili, and then I'm going to follow it up with a roasted cauliflower and lentil soup. In other words, I'm in here just kind of making a mess, so figured I might as well make a mess worth cleaning. And I chopped all the onion for everything. I chopped all the garlic for everything. I made a big pile of uh, work for myself, put things away and decided why not turn it into a, um, well, a lesson. And so I'm videoing. I want to get this started. That'll be done in 15 minutes and then I'll come back on and finish that video when the lentil soup has it, sorry, the lima bean uh, stew has its final prep. But in the meantime, for this red lentil chili, I am using a recipe from Dr. McDougall, and Mary is his cook. And so it's Mary's chili. Now, the recipe calls for whipping, uh, I don't mean whipping, mixing in a blender the tomatoes, the um, tomato paste, this is a whole six ounce can of tomato paste, and two 14.5 ounce cans of smoked, uh, or I should say uh, fire roasted tomatoes, and garlic, a lot of garlic. She called for eight teaspoons, I threw in nine. Uh, because a, tape, a teaspoon of garlic, chopped garlic, is a tablespoon, or mm -hmm. three teaspoons is a tablespoon, so I just did three tablespoons, well that's nine. And I'm going to, I'm not going to do it quite the way she said, because the reason she wants this whipped up is she also uses three ounces of dates in terms of medule dates, the larger, more moist ones, that's five. If you're using the neglette noir, which is a smaller, drier date, um, that's anywhere from eight to nine. And I believe the whole point of mixing it to this degree to, or blending it, is to get that date, whoops, that date chopped up. And then she also called for this chopped, beautifully chopped red bell pepper to also be, I'll use the word macerated, um, that means blended um, or chopped finely in the blender. This whole thing was supposed to go in the blender. I didn't want to do that, so I'm just using a immersion blender and just kind of go down in there and it's taking care of business, making a mash, and I'll show you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, um, I'm going to move you. Sorry for the hand. Sorry for the shakety action. I want to show you what I'm doing here. Uh, let's see if I can bend this there. Okay. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm blending it, but I don't want the tomato to lose its chunk. I like chunky things in a chili. I'm going to put the bell pepper in, and I'm going to chunk that up as well. So what I do is I'll use somebody's recipe. I'll give them credit if I follow it pretty carefully and pretty cleanly. And then I'll just change direction so that you'll understand well so that when you read it you're doing it the way you're actually seeing me do it there okay that's as chunky or as blended as i want it to be if i had put this in the blender it would look like tomato sauce and do you see how chunky that is and yet those dates are mixed up we have a more um sorry for this noise we have a more homogenized mixture, but not one that is um, that is smooth. 
And that, which I just used, is a Cuisinart, um, what they call, uh, well, I call it a wand blender. What do they call it? Hmm. Anyway, immersion blender, immersion blender. Okay, now I've just turned on the, I'm going to pull you back if you don't mind. Well, you know what? Maybe I won't. This might be fun. I've not done this before. Okay. Well, then let's just set this at, um, I'm going to set it at saute just to start getting it hot while I work. Because at this point, after I've done that, I'm adding everything else. What is everything else? Well, it's one full pound of red lentils. And I put... <laughs> The reason they did that is because I don't use a grain or a legume without rinsing it. And when I rinsed this, it kind of began to turn, its starch began to turn this into plaster of Paris. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I hadn't thought about that. But I'll break it up because we don't want a clumpy soup. And you can kind of see what I'm doing. Yes, you can, of course you can. All right, this is a silicone spatula. And rather than using metal, which will scratch my metal as I'm doing this, I see as this is getting more wet, the clumps are opening up now, but I don't want to have any in here that are going to remain a big hard clump during the cooking. Well, next time I'll know when I rinse my red lentils, and it's red lentils more than anything because red lentils, you don't even have to cook that long because they are, um, they, they cook quickly, they cook easily, and there's, their, their starch seems to not be protected by quite the shell that you're going to find on a lot of other beans and peas. There, okay, now... I'm adding to this water, eight quarts. This is gonna be a big pot of soup. And, boy, I hope I haven't overfilled. Mmm, that's interesting. I wasn't even thinking. Well, we'll find out, won't we? This is my six quart Instapot. If I were using a bean that uh, was conventional bean, I wouldn't fill it this high because conventional beans can sometimes create um, a foamy um, residue when they cook, which could clog the top of a pressure cooker. I'm still adding a couple more ingredients. We're going to have to see how this goes, people. We've got a cup of almond milk, some apple cider vinegar, if you haven't used that, I always use the Brabs because it's unpasteurized and it has the mother. The mother is that kind of musky looking stuff at the bottom, which means that it is an active fermentation. And without even browning these first, and normally I always brown, but I thought, no, she didn't and I'm not going to. I would use the saute function, brown my onion to add some extra flavor, but I decided let's give you the easiest combination of instructions. Now what we're going to find out is if I can fill this thing this full and not have a major problem. What I'm adding to it as well, let me back up, are some herbs, actually some spices. So I'm going to pour them in and they include oregano, parsley, so we're just talking dry things, um, chipotle, I've got a chili pepper, salt-free chili pepper, which is a chipotle chili pepper. I have a smoked paprika, so this gives this its smoky flavor. I have some, um, this is, oh, I used the chipotle twice, oh well. I meant to use a different kind of chili, but it's all right. Just a regular chili powder and the chipotle and the smoked paprika, and I didn't. I doubled up on 
chipotle, but it's, it's okay. They're all, it's still a pepper. Okay, easy as can be. I'm going to lock this on. I'm going to, let me back you up. Try not to back you right off the counter. And I'm going to set pressure and I'm going to pressure cook it, I believe it's just 10 minutes, yep, for 10 minutes. And did I set pressure cooker? Maybe not. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna cancel. Let's do this again. Pressure. I may not have. All right, 10 minutes. And we'll get back to you when this is finished and we'll see what we've got.